This is Taspoon, the series where I aim to complete the collection log one random task at a time. After nearly two years and over 4,000 hours of gameplay, I'm finally ready to take on RuneScape's endgame as I venture into the Elite tier. Welcome to Season 4 of Taspoon. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 135 of the Taspoon series. In the last video, I did all of the things in Varlamore that would have been added to the easy, medium, and hard tiers of the spreadsheet, and I'm finally caught back up to the elite tier, and in this episode, we are going to continue. I haven't actually rolled a new task yet, so first thing we're going to go do is, well, find out what we're going to go do, so let's go do it. At this point, it's been over a week since I've been back on the spreadsheet to complete that Rune Dragon's task, so let's see what we get to go and do first. Get five new uniques from Hard Clues, okay. It feels very fitting that the first thing we're coming back to is some Treasure Trails content. There is actually a lot of Hard Clue tasks on the Elite tier, and this is the first one that we've rolled, surprisingly. So, uh, I've got seven caskets and a clue in the bank. Uh, I'm going to go and do all three of these clues and then come back and we'll open eight caskets and see how far we get. And uh, there is a new method in Varlamore that seems pretty good for getting hard clues in an AFK manner, so I may go and try that as well, but first I'm going to go do these clues. By the way, the new hard clue method that I was talking about in Varlamore is killing the Sulfur Naguas in the new Moon's Apparel dungeon. Uh, they are aggressive, so you can just AFK and they'll attack you. They only attack with melee, so you can just camp pray melee. And you have the supplies in the dungeon to use, so you don't have to use any prayer potions or super combats or anything. You can just use the free potions there. And the, because of the negative armor, double hit weapons are super effective against them. And I have the dual makuitu whatever things, uh, the blood moon armor weapons. Unfortunately, I don't have the full Blood Moon set yet. I'm missing the Tacits. Uh, otherwise, I think that would be really good there. But yeah, that's why I think I'm going to be going back to get some hard clues when I want to AFK. And of course, there's always the Jellies. The Jellies are always good. So yeah, probably a combination of those when I do and don't want to AFK. Uh, or maybe we'll get really lucky on the eight clues that I already have. And maybe we're already done. Okay, well, I haven't done these two clues yet, but I can do those after. I just want to open my caskets, so let's see what we got. Eight caskets here. Being realistic, I'm probably hoping for, like, eh, two uniques and I'd be happy. And I got a master clue right away. Okay. Man, it feels so good to be back in, like, the normal old world. I don't know how to describe it, but spending so much time in Varlamore, I played so many hours in the last like week or so, just doing all the new stuff and just being back in the old world where I feel comfortable, where I know what's going on. I don't know. It just feels good. Okay. That is very funny. Literally just last episode, I was talking about how you need the full blue moon set for a new clue step, and that was one of my objectives at the moon's apparel, and then the next episode, like a day later, I get the clue step. That's so funny. I can go and do it. Let's go. This is also the clue step that they changed from needing the Fortis salute to the regular salute. The Fortis salute is a reward from the new Coliseum that you have to get pretty deep into the waves in order to unlock it. I think it's at 20,000 glory, and the farthest I made it was like 6,000, so I'm not even close to being able to do that. But fortunately, like I said, they changed it to the normal salute, which is right here. So there we go, I can do it. Well, thanks to getting lucky with the Blue Moon armor set, I was able to complete the master, which is very nice. And let's go open the rest of those hard caskets. Seven hard caskets left, zero uniques would be very sad, one would be fine, two or more would be excellent. Let's see what we got. Alright, very sad. Well, that was not a great start, but like I said, I have a cool new method to potentially get some pretty decent hard clues per hour while I AFK, so I'm going to go try it out. Uh, last time I was killing them, I didn't actually have uh, the ability to get a hard clue because I still had one in the bank. So I don't really know what the drop rates are, but uh, just the fact that you can kill them so quickly and use like no supplies and you can AFK. I'm just going to go try it, see what we got. So this is the new spot. These sulfur naguas will just sort of come and attack me. There's five spawns on each of these little things. So if you just stand somewhere in the middle, then 
Uh, yeah, they'll just come attack you. I could literally just completely AFK, hands off the keyboard, and eventually I will get hard clues, which is very nice. The wiki doesn't say an exact drop rate yet. These guys haven't been in the game that long, and Jagex hasn't really said anything. So we don't know the exact drop rate on the clues, but I do know that they should be pretty common uh, in the 100 and whatever that I did before. I think I got three potential drops. Although, like I said, I had one in the bank, so uh, I had to pay attention to when I saw the message in chat. But I've reset the loot tracker, so hopefully I can see sort of an approximate drop rate. I'm guessing probably around 1 in 64, maybe like 1 in 100-ish, somewhere in there. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to sit here, do the thing, AFK, get the clues. Yeah. And would you look at that? I go AFK to go pee, and I come back, and there's already a hard clue on the ground. 23 kills in. I love this method already. The only downside to that new method is every time you leave and come back, you have to go and make more potions uh, because you can't take the potions out and they disappear as soon as you teleport. But uh, I think I have a slightly better method. I realized that I can just bring my own vials of water instead of having to wait for... You can only get two at a time from the crate for some reason and it has a delay before you can collect more. But yeah, if I just bring my own vials of water, it shouldn't take too long to just go and catch the things, make the potions, and then go run over there. So... Uh, yeah, the real downside is I'm running out of calcified moths. Uh, those are the teleports to actually get there. I had a decent stock when I was AFKing the calcified bones, but uh, since I stopped doing that for a bit and I've been using them at Moon's Apparel, then uh, my supply has been going down and this will run out very quickly. Uh, but yeah, maybe I'll just have to do more AFK mining. And in fact, I'm actually really close to 92 mining. So next time I need to really AFK, that's probably what I'm going to do. As far as other drops go from these Sulfur and Naguas, uh, a lot of ore, coal, iron, silver, tin, copper, etc. Some runes, not super great ones though, like Chaos, Fire, Nature. Uh, they do have the chance to drop the Sulfur Blades, which alk for like 18k or something, so not super great there either. Uh, the only actually like really cool drop is the Sulfurous Essence, which you can trade in for runecrafting XP. So this does also give a little bit of passive runecrafting XP, sort of, uh, but it's really not a lot. So you're not really getting much else here, but hard clues. Hey, Sulfurous Essence, I was just saying that. Anyways, that's enough yapping from me. I feel like I've been doing way too much talking already, though. So I will see you guys when I get some caskets. I don't know if I got lucky before or unlucky now, but I got like four clues in my first like 150 KC and then I've done like 450 kills since then and I haven't got another clue. So maybe these aren't as good as I thought. Maybe I just got really lucky or maybe I'm getting really unlucky now, but I think after this inventory, I'm just going to go back to the jellies. Uh, I am able to actually play the game right now. No need to AFK. So... Uh, yeah, might as well do the best available method. I, I, I accidentally, I accidentally clicked open on the casket when I was trying to read the next step, but I didn't get anything. Oops. By the way, this is a little bit random, but I was doing some mining last night and I decided to actually go and spend all my stardust. I had about 60 something thousand and I spent it all on gems and yeah, now, now, now I have this, now I have these gems. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but... Uh, I figured now that I have Perilous Moons for soft clay, I don't really need to buy soft clay packs, so, uh, yeah, did that. Oh yeah, and speaking of mining, uh, like I said, I've been doing a lot of mining recently, whether it's AFKing Stars or Calcified Bones or whatever, and, uh, yeah, I'm finally gonna hit 92 mining. There it is, you can now mine Amethyst, uh, which is probably what I'm gonna end up doing over here. Uh, when I need to AFK, it's very nice to AFK and stacking up Amethyst in the bank could be useful in the long run. So yeah, I can finally do this without needing to boost. That's awesome. It does feel pretty cool. I've sort of had a few long-term goals for stuff that I wanted to do while I was AFKing, uh, which started off at 90 woodcutting for Redwoods. I then moved on to 91 or 92 fishing for the uh, Mauritania Elite Diary, uh, where I caught all those Cranwands. And then it was 92 mining for Amethyst. And now, I don't really know if I have any other objectives other than actually doing those things and getting them to 99 eventually, because, uh, yeah, those are sort of the three AFK gathering skills that I have left, and, yeah, I don't know, it just feels cool to be at that point in the account where it's like, now I'm just grinding to 99s. 
But anyways, I am here to play the game. I was sort of hoping that I would get a hard clue geode from all my mining uh, last night, but that didn't happen, so I'm going back to the jellies. Uh, I have three caskets right now. I wasn't actually able to play much last night. I got distracted by some other things, so uh, yeah, let's just go back to the jellies. Okay, here we go. I got five hard caskets to open. Uh, I think I'm just hoping for one new unique here. I think I forgot to show the log earlier, but this is what it's looking like. Just under halfway at about 300 caskets. In fact, this will be over 300 caskets opened. So yeah, don't really have anything in particular I want other than an ancient blessed dehyde piece would be amazing. Uh, what I was doing next, I don't have an ancient dehyde piece. So I was using the ancient blessing. It'd be nice if I could use one of these like the chaps or the body, but uh, yeah, let's just do it. Um, okay, well, I got the Zamorak plate legs, which is good. That That's that's a that's a new unique. Are these on the Mega Rare table? 15 Super Restores? I think that's the Mega Rare table. I'm sad. Open the other one. All right, well, I'm going to go check this, but I'm pretty sure they are, and I'm sad. Okay, well, yeah, I was, I was right. These are on the Mega Rare table. One in 16,250, about half the drop rate of a Gilded piece. So that's kind of sad. I've hit the Mega Rare table four times now, and I've got noted potions three times. So that's unfortunate. But I mean, all things considered, 15 Super Restores are actually kind of useful. Better than 15 Anti Fires, that's for sure. Honestly, it's kind of hard to be mad about that. I did get one new unique, which is what I was after. And uh, yeah, who cares? Hit the Mega Rare table, didn't get anything cool. That's just, that's just RuneScape, you know. Uh, but I did get to the 300 clue mark, which at 300 hard clues, you unlock the Yuri transform emote, which uh, just does exactly what it says it does. Transforms you into Yuri. Cool. All right. couple hours later, we got another five caskets. Again, I'm just hoping for one new unique and I'll be happy. Okay, well, two new uniques, so I'm happy, and two ancient dehyde pieces, one of the ones that I said that would be useful, the chaps. That is huge, three out of five, thank you, game. All right, we'll take it, let's go. Well, this is a little bit random, but I had all these gems in the bank, and I needed to eat dinner, so I was sort of like half AFKing, just bank standing and cutting gems, and I actually did enough to get myself another level. There is 95 crafting. Uh, crafting is one of those things that I never really have like any reason to do it specifically. So anytime that I have a little bit of like semi AFK time where I'm sort of at the computer, but doing something else, uh, I just do a little bit of bank standing and crafting. So yeah, there it is. 95 crafting. Cool. Well, hello and good morning to the gamers. Uh, it is in fact not morning at all. I've just been editing and doing stuff all day. And uh, yeah, uh, I did just want to make a quick addendum. In the last video, I talked a little bit about the Blue Moon set, and I was confused why it felt so janky to use. And I think I, I think I figured out the reason why. Um, I think I forgot to have the automatically trigger set effect option on, which is why I was confused that I had to like manually cast and then click on them for the set effect to work. So uh, yeah, sorry about that. I am gonna make an addendum in the last video, so I probably already mentioned this to you guys, but this is just the first time I'm figuring out about it. And I think that means that this is actually gonna be better for killing jellies for me. Uh, I think that the extra melee attacks is actually a decent amount of DPS, considering that I'm gonna stack up nine of them at a time. I'm almost like guaranteed every cast to at least hit one of them with the stab. Uh, so that is kind of cool. And also statistically, uh, this gives 88 magic accuracy with 5% magic damage. And if I put on my other stuff, uh, it is 83 magic accuracy with 8% magic damage. So I'm gaining a bit of accuracy, losing out on a bit of percent damage, but I don't even know if that percent damage actually adds a max hit or not. So uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna try out using the blue moon equipment to burst jellies for hard clues, which is kind of cool. So it turns out the blue moon set is actually quite good for this. Uh, it's just good magic armor, the extra hits are good DPS, etc. But there's one really, really major problem. Uh, for some reason, if you have your autocast set and you go and switch weapons and then go back to it, it forgets what spell you're casting, and it's really annoying to have to go and select the spell every time. So I don't know how much I'm going to stick with this for now. I really hope they fix that, because, uh, yeah, that sucks. All right, here we go. I got five caskets I'm ready to open. 
Uh, I don't know why this task has just felt like it's dragged on. I guess because I did take an editing break in the middle, but uh, I'm really hoping for two more uniques here and we are done, so let's just do it. That's so sad that I already have both of those. Okay, well, at least we got one Armadillo Coif. There we go. I was going to be really upset if we got zero. Uh, but yeah, four to five. Not too bad. Well, at least now that we're one unique away, I can open the caskets one at a time as I get them. And hopefully we'll be done soon. Okay. Well, I was just trying to record some footage of me using the new set and having the effect proc and everything, and then, well, the triple hard clue drop was unexpected but welcome. So, here we go. Hopefully, we can get at least one unique in these three, so let's just do it. Never mind, I'm sad. Okay, there we go. Rune Defender Ornament Kit. We are done. Uh, yeah, that was a bit of a long one. That was like 26 caskets or something, but uh, finally we are done and moving on. Let's go. Funny enough, I actually still have my Rune Defender. Uh, before, I think you used to have to keep the old Defender in order to be let back in in the downstairs area. I don't think that's the case now. I think once you've unlocked it, you can go back there whenever, but... Uh, just in case, I've kept this defender, so I might as well use it, and now it's gold, which is cool, at least. Uh, but yeah, there we go. We are done. Let's go get a new task. All right, here we go back on the spreadsheet, complete the hard clue task. And like I said before, we still have a bunch of hard clue tasks left on the elite tier, so we will be back. Uh, hopefully not for a little while, so I can bank some caskets, and then the next task will be a bit faster. Uh, but for now, let's just see what we're going to go do. Get one unique item from Mount Karum. Another Mount Karum unique. Okay, this is good. This is really good, actually. I have four Mount Karum unique items left on the spreadsheet, and of the four, three of them are extremely useful. The Hydra Leather being the best in slot melee gloves would be obviously the best thing I could get. That would be amazing. Uh, the last ring piece would finish a brimstone ring, which would be fine. It'd be useful, but not as cool as the gloves for sure. Uh, the Alchemical Hydra Heads, by far the least useful thing I have left. Uh, just used to recolor the helmet and something else, I don't know. But I'm really hoping I don't end up with those, considering they are more rare than the other two pieces. Uh, and then I do still have the uh, Dragon Harpoon left from Worms. At some point, I'm going to have to go back and get those. Uh, but yeah, not really going to worry about that. I think I still have a Hydra Slayer task right now, so I can just go start immediately. I got 85 Alchemical Hydras left to kill. So yeah, we're just going to go do it. Oh yeah, apparently I was completely wrong, by the way. For some reason, I thought the Alchemical Hydra Heads were a 1 in a 1,000, uh, which would make them twice as rare as the Hydra Leather, but they are, in fact, a 1 in 256, uh, which makes them twice as common as the Hydra Leather. So, uh, yeah, the most common thing we're probably going to end up with is the Ring Piece, and if not the Ring Piece, then probably the Heads, and if not those, then maybe the Hydra Leather. But, yeah, the Hydra Leather would be way cooler, so we're hoping for that. Okay, here we go. I'm going to be using the same setup I was using before for range, uh, prioritizing range, accuracy, and prayer. And yeah, pretty much just doing the same thing, trying to get back in the swing of things. You know, even if you've killed a boss a thousand times, sometimes the first few kills can be a bit sloppy. Uh, but then I am going to transition to some melee kills. I would like to try and get the last two combat achievements. Uh, now, the last one might be a bit hard. Uh, the Grandmaster speed time is like one minute, 20 seconds. I don't think that's possible, but the one minute, 45 seconds is definitely possible with melee, uh, considering that I believe my PB is 147. So, yeah, I'm going to try and get that speed task. I am trying to prioritize more combat achievements. Uh, after getting the elite combat tier, I realized how long of a grind it's going to be to get to master. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and do as many of those as I can. And, uh... Has anyone ever noticed that this wheel doesn't spin? It just sort of does like a partial rotation and then loops? No, just me? Okay. 
Uh, so fortunately, it's been long enough since I've killed Alchemical Hydra that these recent kills aren't being automatically added to my other kills on the loot tracker. Uh, so I can see exactly the loot that I've gotten in these five kills that I just did. I've gotten 10 super restores from the five kills. My entire inventory is just filled with super restores. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. All right, well, first trip went pretty well, as you can see. Still had tons of supplies. I had about 30 doses of range pot on the ground, uh, but unfortunately I did perish. Uh, I thought I had killed it, but it did the thing where it regens one hit point on the tick that it would have died, and then I just looked away. I was responding to a message, and uh, yeah, then it killed me. So that was bad, but I am going to swap to melee just because I want to mix things up and go for a speed kill. So yeah, let's try that. So the Alchemical Hydra stabbing has been going pretty well. Uh, I've had a bunch of 148s in here. I don't know how many I actually have in the chat, but uh, yeah, another 147 tied PB there, but haven't managed to break by PB or break the 145 speed time, but it'll come soon. Uh, and what I'm doing is instead of specking once per kill, like you'd probably want to do normally uh, just for the most kills per hour, I'm saving both my specs until I have them both available for one kill and then trying to go for a speed time. Uh, and yeah, like I said, it's it's been close, it's getting there, but no luck yet. Uh, just gonna go again. One thing I am gonna change, I'm actually gonna bring the Blood Fury. Uh, I noticed that the HP sustain, especially while using these Divine Potions, is a little bit tough, uh, considering that I'm Dragon Warhammer specking and not Blowpipe specking now. And uh, the Blood Fury is good for that. I'm not gonna use it all the time, I'm still gonna use the Torture, but now I can just swap to it when I need to heal. And yeah, because the damage at Hydra is so predictable, you should only really be taking damage 50-50 uh, chance on the first hit of the kill, and then like your Divine Potions and nothing else really. Uh, so as long as I have the Blood Fury available, I don't need to camp it the whole time. Just get back up to full and then switch back to the Torture. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, this, this could be it, this could be it. Is this it? Let's go! 135! I could just I, I could just feel it. It felt so fast. I'm actually really enjoying the melee kills now that I've swapped to bringing the Blood Fury. The main problem I had before is just slowly getting whittled down and running out of food, but with the Blood Fury, I feel like I don't even need to bring sharks, like, at all. Like, I'm always ending up with way too much food. In fact, I might bring just way more prayer potions next time, because, uh, yeah, the Blood Fury is just crazy good sustain. And this is going to be the last kill of my Slayer task, so unless we get it right here, we need to go hunt for a new task. But uh, I'm just happy I got that speed task. That was like my main goal, so I'm happy. Now, fortunately for me, I don't have a Slayer streak right now. Uh, I get all my tasks by Turial skipping, and so I can just Turial skip to try and get another Hydra's task or a Worm's task. Uh, I can't get the back-to-back -back Hydra's because I don't have 99 Slayer yet. Uh, by the way, 741k away from that. Uh, but I could get a Worms task. I did not get a Worms task. Uh, so I'm just going to go do some Toriel skipping until I get one of those. So, be right back. Well, this is kind of annoying. Uh, I got a Worms task, but it's in the new area in Varlamore with the Moons of Peril Caves. It's called Nepotsli, if you didn't know, uh, which I had to Google that. Um, and these worms, there's only Wormlings. There's no regular worms. And the Wormlings don't drop the uniques. So officially now, before the only place worms existed in the game were in the Mount Karum dungeon. So every worms task was in the Mount Karum dungeon. But uh, yeah, now apparently there's a 50% chance that it's in this dungeon that is useless to me. So that's kind of annoying. All right, well, there we go. Better than a worms task. 154 hydras in the Karum Slayer dungeon. Very nice. Uh, that only ended up taking me like 25, 30 minutes of skipping. So yeah, good. Nice. Huh. Well, today I learned Alchemical Hydra drops hard clues. I had no idea. Uh, there is the end of another trip. That was a nice long one. I am up to 501 KC, uh, meaning that I'm actually closing in on the drop rate of the leather. Uh, I am almost double the drop rate of the heads, and uh, I'm not going to do the math on the drop rate of three ring pieces. But uh, yeah, I would, uh, I would like to see a drop soon, please.
Okay, yeah, melee I think is definitely the way going forward. Fast kill times, pretty consistent. Blood Fury's OP, long trips. Uh, that was a 32 kill trip, which was amazing. Uh, still no drop though, so we go again. Yo! I was like, what am I looking at? Those are the alchemical hydra heads, let's go! Now, obviously, like I said, not exactly the thing that I wanted, but I knew I was going to get them eventually, so okay to get them out of the way now. Uh, we did end up going well over two times the drop rate for those, so I guess we were due on them. And yeah, next time, we're guaranteed to get at least something useful. We're either going to get the leather or the heart uh, completing the ring, so uh, yeah, can't really complain, and we get to go and do something else, which is always nice. Unfortunately for me, I don't really have a use for the Hydra Heads. Uh, you can only actually do two things with them. One is recolor the Slayer Helm, which I do think that recolor looks very cool. But unfortunately, it costs a thousand Slayer Points, and I don't have that, and I'm definitely not going to grind for it. And I already have a Jad Slayer Helm, so uh, yeah, not going to do that. You can actually stuff them and mount them in your house, which... Now that I'm thinking about it, I may end up doing just to save the bank space, uh, but for now, I'm just going to put them with the rest of the heads there, and that's where they're going to stay for a really long time, probably. I'll put the loot tracker on screen here. I ended up doing 179 kills on this task for a total of 16.9 mil, and uh, that doesn't even include the Hydra bones, because I had the bone crusher, so they weren't tracked. And, uh, yeah, that's just crazy. Somehow I did only end up with one brimstone key, even though it's a 1 in 40, uh, so that's kind of sad, but... Uh, yeah, that's just, I don't know, man. Alchemical Hydra never ceases to impress me. Every time I go there, it's just, it just prints money. Anyways, enough with all that. I'm going to go do this hard clue that I got from Hydra, and then we'll go roll a new task. Okay, here we go. Back on the spreadsheet, we can complete the task. And uh, let's see what we're doing. I'm hoping for either a God Wars dungeon, a raids, or a Desert Treasure 2 boss task. So let's see what we get. Oh, there we go. Get one unique from God Wars Dungeon. Perfect. There are two main reasons I wanted the God Wars Dungeon task. Uh, first of all, I just need Bando's Tacits. They're such a big upgrade offensively and defensively. There isn't really a workaround of these. I just need to get them eventually. And second of all, as you can see here, I need a Godsword Shard 1. I've already got the Bando's Hilt, and unlocking Bando's Godsword would be very nice. As well as, in the future, I'd like to go to uh, Zilliana and get a Ceridoman Hilt as well. So having a blade to put back and forth on those would be amazing. Now, the one problem is I might end up getting the Bando's Boots, which are definitely less useful for me. Uh, there is a clue step that would be nice to be able to do, but other than that, the one reason I wanted these was to maybe get an Echo Crystal before I knew what it was. Uh, but now that we know both how hard it is to get and how relatively useless it is, uh, the Echo Boots or whatever they're called are just, they just run out of charges so fast. I don't see them as a viable option for Iron Man at all. Uh, until they change them, which I'm really hoping they do. They haven't said that they're going to, but Jagex, it'd be so easy. Make it so the Echo Crystal is the thing that upgrades the boots, and then make it so that Sunfire Splinters are the thing that gives it charges. It'd be so easy and would help increase the value, or rather, uh, keep the value of the Sunfire Splinters. So, yeah, that's my, that's my solution to you, Jagex. Feel free to use that one, but... Uh, yeah, we're hoping for a shard one and then tacits. So I've done enough talking. I'm going to finish alking these things and then we'll go get started. So after the last few tasks, my supplies have been running a little bit low, specifically the food. I used a lot of cranbams on the rune dragons task and I was already low on angler fish. So I spent all of last night fishing cranbams and then I started doing some anglers this morning. I managed to get to 93 fishing, which I forgot to record, but I'm recording this now instead. And yeah, just gonna fish a few more anglers, and then we'll go get started. Hello and good morning to the gamers. Uh, I actually got all ready last night to go and do a trip here, but then I went to bed and decided I was gonna do it in the morning. And today, there is a game update that, uh, first and foremost, makes it so you can no longer put Black Chin Chompas in your Hunter's Kit. And for some reason, that decided to drop my 15 Black Chin Chompas that I had in there on the ground. I don't know why I don't have a hunter's kit on me. You'd think it would put them in the bank automatically, but this is RuneScape we're talking about, so here we are. Uh, I'm gonna go and do some bandos. I, don't, I think I'm just gonna release these. I have no use for these, but yeah, I just thought that was funny. 
There was a lot of other notable stuff in the update today, but most of it's not super relevant to me right now. Uh, they released the drop rates of stuff, they fixed some bugs, they changed some things, a lot to do with the Varlamore stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to ignore it all. It's not really relevant, and we're just going to go and hit the guy with the bow. That's like the worst thing. Oh. Oh no. I don't even know how to explain how sad I am about this log. I mean, like, it's fine. I got a BCP and a hilt, which are both great, but no shard to make a blade to use the hilt, no tacits or boots in 440 KC. I don't know. I'm just sick of bandos. I just, I want to move on from this boss and never look back, but. Uh, yeah, that's not an option yet. We got to keep going. <laughs> yes, let's go. Oh my goodness. Let's freaking go, man. Get me out of here. I'm not going to lie. After the Bando's hilt thing, I, I took a moment. I logged off for like an hour and just sort of let myself recuperate. Came back in. Same trip and we get the tacits. Let's go. We started the task at 392 KC and we got those on 451. So I actually only did 59 kills on the task, uh, which you'll probably be able to tell. This wasn't a very long section of the video. Uh, unfortunately did not manage to snag the shard one first, so it wasn't the perfect task, but it was pretty good. And as with any gear upgrade, it's not official until I replace it in the bank. And, uh, man, it just looks so good. So the tacits, by the way, are just a direct upgrade in every way. Uh, they have plus one prayer, plus one melee strength, a bunch of defense bonus. The only thing negative about them is they have worse magic and range attack bonuses, which are completely irrelevant because you're never going to be wearing them when doing either of those. So yeah, they're just, they're just amazing. And finally, if I go ahead and put all my gear on, I finally feel like this is what I should look like in the end game. The only thing I'm really missing are the ferocious gloves, which hopefully we can get on the next Hydra task. Uh, but yeah, this is, I mean, just look at me, man. I'm like, I'm ready. I've actually just been sitting here for like five minutes looking at this screen. Like, I don't know. This is like, this is, I've never had gear this good on any account. This is, this account is way better than my main account ever was in terms of both total level and like gear value. I mean, I even just looked at the bank the other day. My bank's almost worth two build somehow. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm really proud of this account. It just, it feels good, you know? Now, an interesting little conundrum that I have, for the next God Wars dungeon task, I might not go back to Bandos for the first time in uh, the elite tier of God Wars dungeon tasks. Uh, the Bandos boots are significantly less useful than the other pieces, and because I got the three that I want, the only reason I would really go back for the boots is so they have them for the clue step. Uh, but compared to going to Zilliana and perhaps getting a Ceridoman hilt or an Armadillo crossbow, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I guess it doesn't matter. For now, we can just go and roll a new task. I don't know what it was about getting that drop. Maybe it was just the fact that I got redemption from the Bando's Hilt dupe, but I am so ready for a new task. I don't know why. I'm just, I have so much motivation right now. So let's complete the task and let's see what we're going to go do. Get one unique from Master Clues. Okay. Luckily for me, I've still got some Master Caskets in the bank, 12 of them to be specific. Uh, just ignore these clues, I'm about to go do them. But yeah, my Master Luck has actually been pretty good so far. Uh, I have four Uniques in 12 Caskets. Uh, master Clues are similar to Elites in the sense that their Uniques are pretty rare, so I feel like my luck has been pretty good. Anyway, I actually don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm dreading the day that I run out of Caskets for these tasks, and I actually have to go and like, get one of each clue and hand them in and everything. That just doesn't sound fun. So yeah, I'm just hoping for unique here. I'm just going to start opening. There's nothing really to say other than please game, give me your unique. A mimic. Okay. First time getting to use my new Bandos Tacits. They worked pretty well. 
Uh, let me go bang some stuff. And in case you didn't know how it works, the Mimic Caskets have an increased chance at rolling third age pieces, as well as the ability to roll the Ring of Third Age. I think the Ring is like 1 in 40 something, and the third age drop table for a Master Casket Mimic is like 1 in 200 something. I don't really know, but uh, increased odds as well as just an extra roll. So hopefully we get something cool. Uh, no, our extra roll was 600 death runes, but oh well, uh, we continue. Hey, there we go. Gloves of Darkness. I was getting so concerned. Four caskets remaining. Oh, I'm not looking forward to when I run out of those, but we are done. Let's go. I was actually about to go and do these three clues when I came over to Watson to hand in a scroll book, and I noticed that I actually don't have any clues here, so I think I'm just going to hand them all over to Watson, and then next time I get an elite clue, I can trade it in for a master, uh, partially because I'm lazy and don't really want to do them right now, and partially because... Well, I only got four caskets left, so uh, yeah, I'm glad I checked that. Anyways, we are moving on. Let's go get a new task. Honestly, I think the worst task I could roll right now would be another Master Clue task. So pretty much anything else and I'd be happy. Let's just see what we got. Get one unique from Elite Clues. Oh my god, I had a heart attack. All right, well, pretty much the exact same thing as last task. I've got six caskets in the bank, and uh, yeah, just hoping for one unique. I've got 11 uniques on 81 caskets right now, so uh, yeah, I'm just going to do it and hope for some good luck. Well, that's some pretty good luck. Black Dehyde Champs trimmed on the first casket. Let's go. I don't know what is going on with my luck today. I'm just having the best luck, and it feels amazing. Uh, but yeah, there it is. First casket. We're already done. Let's just go, uh, let's go roll a new task. All right, we're back. You already know what it is. Complete the task. 33% done the elite tier. That's cool to see one third of the way. And, uh, let's see what we're doing. Get one unique from the Hallowed Sepulcher. Um, okay, sure. The reason I was a little bit hesitant there is th this could be a long task. Uh, I'm only 88 agility currently, which means that I don't have access to the last floor. And of the uniques that I have remaining, you need access to the last floor to get two of them. And the other one is the pet recolor, which I believe is 3000 hallowed marks, uh, which is just the most expensive thing there is to buy. So this could be a long task. Now, the good thing is I'll get some agility training, which I don't often get. Uh, so I might actually get a few agility levels and then access to the RD cores without boosting, which would be cool. But other than that, this could be a long one. Now, the good news is I have all of the hallowed pieces already, so I should be able to do this at pretty much maximum efficiency. Uh, I just, you know, have to do a lot of it. And so I'm just going to start. Oh yeah, and I'm also going to be getting strange old lockpicks from this task. Uh, now, I don't know how much I really care about them. I've already green logged barrows, so I won't be going back anytime soon. But maybe in the long run, I might go back there for some elite clues. So having a stock of lockpicks would make that faster. So yeah, I guess that is cool. So I'm just now realizing how long this task is actually going to be. Uh, I've been doing this for maybe like an hour and 45 minutes, let's say, and I'm just about to hit 200 marks. So I've still got like over 10 times this to go. And uh, yeah, just going to be running laps. I don't really have anything to say. Hell Sepulcher is not a, you know, there's not a lot that can happen here that's super interesting. So I don't really know what I'm going to show you guys, but... Uh, I did just remember on that last coffin that you can actually get clues here, and I'm uncertain if I want to bother doing the clues. Uh, I think I'll probably do if I get... I don't know what kind of clues you can actually get here. I haven't looked into that, but uh, if I get any hard or elite clues, I'm probably going to do them. Probably going to skip the easy and mediums because, well, I can get those pretty easily. But uh, yeah, like I said, this is going to be a long one, so hope you guys are ready. Okay, so it is pretty much what I expected. I went and googled the clue thing, and you can get the different level clue scrolls on the different floors. So easy is on floor one, medium is two and three, hard is four, and elite is five. And unfortunately, can't get to floor five yet, so I won't be getting any elite clues. But I could get some hard clues here and there, which I will probably go and do just to break up the monotony of Howard Sepulcher. And, you know, I want to stack up those hard caskets in the bank, but... 
Uh, yeah, unfortunately, can't get any elite clues. Oh, hey, would you look at that? A hard clue. Nice. So I think I found a bug. Uh, I, as you can see, I clearly do not have a pet following me, but if I click on my call follower button, a Chaos Elemental pet appears and I can talk to it, but I can't pick it up. It just disappears when I try and pick it up. I don't know. This is weird. Okay, hello, good morning to the gamers. Uh, the last couple days has been a lot of editing and just trying to fit in a few Hald's Polka runs here and there whenever I can. Uh, so my XP per hour has dropped a little bit, but I'll just put it on screen here so you can see. Done about seven, eight hours of a very casual Hald's Polka. I'm up to 769 nice tokens. And uh, today I finally have a lot of time that I'm going to dedicate to Hald's Polka. I'd like to do at least 10 hours today, which now that I'm saying it out loud sounds like a lot. So. I uh, better get started. <laughs> 10 inefficient hours of Howled Sepulcher later. Going to be getting my first agility level of the task. 89 agility. Uh, we are also at around 1100 hallowed tokens at this point, or hallowed marks. Uh, so I'm going to be deemed to do this about 20 more hours-ish, uh, which is... A lot, but oh well, uh, I'm at least going to be able to get to 90 agility for sure. Not going to get to 91, but that's fine. So I'll get that goal done. Uh, but yeah, there we go. I'm just going to keep going. It is a little bit unfortunate that I rolled this task before 92 agility. Uh, not that there's any way of me getting 92 agility before rolling these Hallowed Spulker tasks, but because I don't have access to the fifth floor, I don't have any chance for the Ring of Endurance, and there's only one more Hallowed Spulker task on the spreadsheet after this, and I'm most likely going to end up getting the Mysterious Page on the fifth floor before the ring, so if I do ever want a Ring of Endurance, I'm going to have to come back here on my own time to go for it, and... I don't think I'm going to do that. I mean, I don't know how useful the Ring of Endurance really is in the late game. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But uh, yeah, it just means that I don't really have access to that. Again, there's nothing really to do about it. There's no way of me getting 92 agility before rolling these. And in fact, for the next Hound's Pulker task, I'm probably going to have to grind agility before even attempting it because I'm going to need access to the fifth floor to do it. So yeah, it's just unfortunate the way things worked out, but it is what it is. Okay, hello, good morning once again. Uh, it is the next day. Didn't quite get in the 10 hours that I was hoping for yesterday. Probably ended up doing more like 8, but made some decent progress. 1,700 hallowed marks, 1,300 to go. Uh, and I will put this on screen here. 650k ad GXP so far. Uh, got another like 450k to go. So uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, and of course I wasn't recording, but there is level 90 agility. Uh, I've been doing Hound Sepulcher like all day today. I think I did like 11, maybe 12 hours of Hound Sepulcher, and my brain is just like complete mush at this point. I don't know why Hound Sepulcher is just so mentally draining for me, but uh, yeah, almost done the task, but it's going to have to wait till tomorrow because I need to go to bed. Oh wow, I also just noticed I am two runecrafting levels away from base 90s now. That's pretty cool. Okay, hello, good morning gamers. Uh, I am just now remembering how long I spent doing Hallowed Sepulcher yesterday, but that means I only need 400 Hallowed Marks that's so doable. Today's the day we can finally move on from this task. Oh, and would you look at that, 3,003 Hallowed Marks, we are done. Let me just go and finish this run. I ended up gaining almost 1.1 million agility experience. It took about 22 hours of Howled Sepulcher uh, over about four days. This has been a long one, not gonna lie. Very mentally draining, but happy to be done with it. And I can buy the Dark Acorn. And uh, there we go. Minus one bank space until we get an agility pet. You know, I was just looking at the loot tracker for all the coffins that I opened this video, which I will put on screen right here. And I noticed that I only actually ended up getting two hard clues. And then I realized uh, I actually did some mining at some point when I was AFKing one night. And I got a hard clue geode that I put in the bank and said that I was going to do the next morning. And just completely forgot about it. And the entire time I was thinking like, oh, that's weird. I haven't got any more hard clues. Just the two from before. And, uh, yeah, that's because I couldn't have, and I didn't notice the message in chat. I don't know if it actually said it any time, but, uh, oftentimes I was on my clan chat because I don't really care about all the spam of hitting traps and looting chests and whatnot, so, 
Uh, yeah, rip to the clue plan, I guess, but uh, I guess it would have been a lot slower had I done them all. Either way, I ended up doing about 200 floor four, floor four completions. I don't know why that's so hard to say. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just happy to be done. Either way, I ended up with a lot of useful stuff from this task, most notably a bunch of adamant and rune bolts, which is very nice. Uh, a bunch of monies, a bunch of strange lockpicks, ended up with 14 of those. So if I do ever go back to Barrows, I won't feel bad about burning through them. Uh, a bunch of runes, prayer potions, Renaro seeds and weeds, and yeah, honestly, pretty good. So can't really complain. And like I said, 90 agility, so now I can use the arty rooftop course for Marks of Grace without needing to boost, which is just sort of nice. So yeah, all things considered, not too bad, just long and slow. Uh, but let's go roll a new task. I don't know if I'll have time to do it in this video, but let's at least go see what it is and then we'll decide. All right, here we go back on the spreadsheet. We can complete the task and I'm just warning you right now. If I get back to back how sepulcher tasks, I am going to cry. So let's see what it is. Get one new unique from elite clues. Okay. This is actually like sort of perfect. Uh, I've already got five elite caskets in the bank, so we can open these right now. And if we get the thing, then that's awesome. And we can roll a new task for next episode. And if we don't get it, then we can just do this task in the next episode. So five caskets. Let's hope for one unique. A master clue. Well, I'll be right back. Pretty quick master clue there. No complaints. Had all the items and requirements, etc. Going back to the elite caskets. Four left. Here we go. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, it looks like we're going to have to finish that task in the next episode. A uh, little bit unfortunate. Obviously, I would have preferred to have finished it already, but that does mean I get to go back to my new favorite way to get elite clues, the next mass world, uh, along with some upgrades. I got the dragon crossbow now instead of the rune crossbow. I've got some ancient dehyde, which is just sort of convenient. So yeah, all things considered, not too bad. Maybe we'll get spooned a cool item, but... Uh, yeah, that's gonna have to do it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and check if you're subscribed, as those are the two best ways to help my videos with the YouTube algorithm. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one. I want to give a big thank you to all of my channel members, but a special thank you to my tier 3 Big Spoon channel members, Alchemist BTW, Jack Staumer, Zach Martin, Luxeter, Tony Adkins, Dolph, and Fading Shadow. And if you want to see your name here in the credits for the rest of the season, consider becoming a channel member. The lowest tier is only $2 a month, and it really helps me out. Thank you.